What's going on everybody? Kleepas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you 10 more tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy A34 5G that you might not know about. Now as always, if you do end up wanting to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to manage your status bar notifications. To do this, go to settings. From here, go to notifications. Then from here, go to advanced settings. And up here at the top, we're going to have a few different options. So by default, it's going to show your three most recent notifications. So if you have like a system notification, text message, and say Instagram, those three are going to show up and anything beyond that is not going to show up. You can also have it show everything, which trust me, this gets pretty messy. You can also have it show only the number. So if you're getting a lot of notifications in general, this could be a good thing. Or you could have it show nothing at all. So definitely nice to have a few different options here. Now I'm going to show you how to take a screen recording. So what you're going to do is swipe down from the top twice. So one, two, then from here, tap on where it says screen recorder. So right here. And there are going to be a few different options. For the sound, by default, it's going to record media. So if you're recording like a video or a game or something like that, you can also have it record media and mic. So if you want to narrate it, or you could turn the sound off. And then show taps and touches. This is like a little cursor that shows up wherever you touch. So I'm going to turn this on so you can see it. Then from here, hit start recording. There's going to be a countdown. You can also skip it if you want. And now we are recording. So here's the cursor right here. You can kind of see it. With this toolbar, you can draw. So, And you can also have it record like a selfie video when you're making the screen recording. So definitely cool. You can't really see my face at all, but you can also pause it. And then finally, when you're done, hit stop. And now, as you can see, the screen recording is saved right to the photos. So yeah, definitely a real simple feature, but we do have some other screen recording options we can change. To get to these, go to settings. From here, go to advanced features. And from here, go to screenshots and screen recorder. So in this menu, first we got some screenshot options. So show toolbar, so when you take a screenshot, this little toolbar is gonna show up, so right there. If you don't want that to show up, you can always toggle it off. Delete after sharing, so this is definitely a nice thing to have on. Hide status and navigation bars. Save original screenshots. Now, I'm not 100% sure what this really does. I guess if you edit the screenshot, it'll still save the original. I feel like this is kind of unnecessary, but you always can use it if you want. You can also change your file format from a JPG to a PNG, and you can change the save location. And then for the screen recording settings, you can change the default sound settings. So again, by default, it will be set to media, but say you never make screen recordings with sound, you could always turn it off or maybe you wanna narrate it. Video quality, so by default, it will be 1080p, which does make sense since after all, the display is 1080p. But if you want it to be a bit smaller, you can change it to 720p so you can save a little space. And then finally, the selfie video size so you can make it larger or a bit smaller. Show taps and touches, so again, that's that little cursor thing. And then finally, save screen recordings in. So just like the screenshots, you can change the save location here. Now I'm going to show you how to change your screen color mode. To do this, go to settings. From here, go to display. Then from here, go to screen mode. So right here. So as you can see, by default, it will be set to vivid. And this is basically going to enhance the colors and make things look a bit nicer. And on a Super AMOLED display like this, things definitely do look really nice. But if you want things to be a bit more natural, maybe you don't really like this saturated kind of look, you can change it to natural. So yeah, as you can see, the colors aren't as strong, but you might prefer it like this. You can also change the actual white balance. And then finally, if we go to advanced settings, you can customize it even more. The next thing I'm going to show you is a feature called Palm Swipe to Capture. Now, this is basically an alternate way to take a screenshot, so the regular way to take a screenshot, of course, is by pressing the power key and the volume down key at the same time. And keep in mind, you don't have to hold these buttons, just press them real quick like this. And that's pretty much it. So yeah, definitely simple. But with Palm Swipe to Capture, this feature is on by default, by the way. To take a screenshot, all you have to do is swipe your palm across the screen, so like this. And that's pretty much it. Now, if for whatever reason it's not on on your phone, what you can do is go to Settings. From here, go to Advanced Features. Then from here, go to Motions and Gestures. And as you can see, all the way at the bottom, Palm Swipe to Capture is right here. And again, by default, it is on on this phone. But again, if it's not for some reason, this is where you go to turn it on. And again, in case you missed it, to actually take a screenshot with this feature, all you have to do is swipe your palm across the edge of the screen. So like this. And it does work from both sides, or at least I think it does, let's see. And there we go. So yeah, it does work from both sides. So definitely a nice feature to have. 
Now we're going to take a closer look at the edge panel. Now in case you don't know, the edge panel is right here. So see this little tab right here? If you pull it out, it's going to show you a few different apps. So basically like a little shortcut bar. Definitely nice to have. This right here is the default, which is decently useful already. But if you want to customize it, you can hit this pencil icon right here. This is going to take you to the screen where you can pretty much add and remove whatever you want from these bottom four. For some reason, the calculator, gallery, and calendar are always going to be up here. I don't know why it chose those specifically, but on every Samsung phone I've ever used, that's pretty much how it is. But as far as these bottom ones go, you can customize them however you want. And it looks like you can even add one more. So I'm going to add Call of Duty to the bottom one here. And it looks like it works. So now if we go back, there it is. Now that was easy enough, but you can actually customize the edge panel even more. To do this, go to settings. From here, go to display. Then from here, go to edge panel. So right here, it is on by default, but if you just want to disable it, maybe you never use it, you can simply toggle it off and now it's gone. But if we go into edge panels, first of all, you can change the actual panels. So by default, it's just going to be apps, but you can also add people, smart select, tasks, weather, the list really goes on and you can even download a bunch more from the Galaxy Store. So definitely quite a few options. I'm going to do people just to see what it looks like. So if we go like this, it's basically like a contact shortcut kind of thing. So definitely cool. And then you can also customize the handle. So if we go here, these are pretty much the default settings. So you can change the color, make it more or less transparent. So you can make it pretty much solid and make it a bit larger. So as you can see, it's a lot more visible now. So definitely a lot of options here. Now we're going to go over some options for the always on display. Now, in case you don't know what it is, the always on display is basically this right here. It's basically the screen between being off and the lock screen. So definitely nice and you can customize this a decent amount. So to do this, go to settings. From here, go to lock screen. So right here. Then from here, go to always on display. And we got a few different options. So by default, it is going to be on, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you want to disable it, you always can. You can also change the way it shows up. So by default, it will be on tap to show. So again, if I lock the phone, tap it once, it's going to show up. You can also have it show always. So now it's really an always on, always on display. You can also schedule it. So kind of interesting or show for new notifications. You can also customize the clock. So if we go here, got a few different styles to choose from and you can change the color too. You can also have it show music information, so it will do this by default. Screen orientation, this is a kind of weird one because I don't know why you would want it to be landscape, but you technically can. It's kind of weird, but there it is. And then auto brightness by default, this will be on, but you can turn it off and make it as bright or dim as you want. And that's pretty much it. The next thing I'm going to show you is a feature called Eye Comfort Shield. Now this feature is going to tint your screen in a kind of warm amber color. This is going to filter out blue light and make the display a bit easier on your eyes. So for this, go to settings. From here, go to display. And from here, Eye Comfort Shield is right here. Toggle it on. And as you can see, the screen is a bit warmer. If we go here, by default, it will be set to adaptive. So this is basically going to automatically set everything. But if you want, you can also customize it. So you can make it stronger or weaker. So this is really strong. And you can also set a schedule. The next thing I'm gonna show you is a feature called camera flash notification. Now this is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. When you get a notification from certain apps, the camera is gonna flash real quick. And I know some people really like this feature. A bunch of older phones all used to have it, but nowadays you don't really see it as much anymore. But it is a pretty cool option to have. So to get to this feature, go to settings. From here, go to accessibility. So all the way at the bottom, right here. Then from here, go to advanced settings. From here, go to flash notification. And as you can see, camera flash notification is right here. So toggle it on. And basically, in case you're wondering, this is what it's gonna look like. Now, by default, it is gonna do this for all apps. But if you want, you can set it to pretty much any ones you want. Now I'm gonna show you how to change the layout of your grid on the home screen. So to do this, press and hold your finger on any blank spot on the home screen. So like this. This screen is gonna show up. From here, go to settings. And from here, we got a few different options. First of all, if you go to home screen layout, by default, it's going to be a pretty standard design. So you got the home screen and then the app drawer. But if you want, you can get rid of the app drawer and have everything show up on the home screen, which I personally wouldn't do it. But if you want to, you always can. Then we got the actual home screen grid. So if we go here, by default, it will be 4x5. But you can also change it to 4x6, 5x5 or 5x6. So if you want to fit a bunch of different apps on your home screen, this is definitely a nice thing. Then we got the app screen layout. So if we go here, 
This is basically the same thing but for your app drawer. So again, by default, it will be 4x5, but of course, you can change it to 4x6, 5x5, or 5x6. And then finally, folder grid. By default, it will be 3x4, but you can change it to 4x4. And in case you don't know what it is, the folders are these right here. And this is the app drawer. And then finally, the last thing I'm going to show you is a feature called Lift to Wake. Now, this is a feature that's pretty simple, but definitely still a cool thing to have. So to get to this feature, go to Settings. From here, go to Advanced Features. Then from here, go to Motions and Gestures. And Lift to Wake is right here at the top. For some reason, it's the only one in this entire menu that's not on by default. But regardless, if you turn it on, basically if you lock the screen, put the phone down, pick it back up, it's gonna turn on, or in theory it will turn on, but sometimes it doesn't really work. You have to kind of like lift it high or something like that. There we go. So as you can see, it kind of works. In general, it's not really that big a deal as far as features go, but in real life when you're actually using the phone, it can be a pretty convenient thing to have. But those were 10 more tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy A34 5G. Again, if you do want to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description, where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipas Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.